10 minutes. Uh, Selamat siang. Uh, so my name is David Katz. I'm an epidemiologist at the University of Washington in the Department of Global Health and also as an HIV work as an HIV testing services consultant uh, for WHO. Uh, and so I've been asked to give an overview of partner notification services. And so I'll start with just uh, how it works um, and then talk about WHO guidelines and then some implement, uh, implementation considerations. So this uh, slide here shows kind of the process of how partner notification services work. It's a voluntary process by which a trained provider asks people diagnosed with HIV about their sexual and drug injecting partners. Um, and then if the client consents, offers to assist in notifying the partners of their potential exposure, as well as offering HIV testing and linkage to prevention and care. And so the, the objective here is really to increase testing among people, partners of people living with HIV uh, and link them to prevention and care services. So uh, part, partner notification has really been a long-standing component of infectious disease management for many infections, including for tuberculosis and bacterial STIs. Uh, it's until the last decade, HIV part, partner notification for HIV was really focused specifically in, uh, it was limited to some high income countries, including the Australia, Australia and the US, uh, but increasing evidence of its safety and effectiveness, particularly coming out of Sub-Saharan Africa, led WHO to uh, release guidelines around partner notification uh, and uh, subsequent global scale up. So the rationale here is that sexual and drug injecting partners of people living with HIV have an increased likelihood of being HIV positive or at high risk for HIV acquisition and may not be aware of their potential exposure or, type or, or infection. Uh, as a result, that means that partner notification really present, presents an important opportunity for high yield HIV case finding, as well as an opportunity to link partners to HIV prevention and treatment. Um, Therefore, partner notification can really help us achieve the 90-90 and 90 objectives and ultimately decrease HIV transmission, morbidity, and mortality. So there are several options that providers can discuss with clients for notifying their partners. So the three on the top here are considered assisted approaches, uh, where the provider really assists the uh, client in notifying their partners. So this is, for the first of this, these are provider referral, uh, which involves the healthcare provider calling or visiting their partners to notify them of exposure and offering testing. Uh, contract referral, where the client agrees to notify their partner with this, within a specific time period, after which the provider will contact the partners with the client's permission. Is the is it not working? Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. Just closer. Oh, just closer. Okay. Yeah. I talk with my hands, so sometimes. Oh, there we go. It's uh, I try not to. I don't know how to use my microphone. Um, okay, so and then dual referral where clients and providers will notify their partners together. And clients can also, of course, uh, choose to notify their partners themselves um, and encourage them to get tested. This is considered client referral. Uh, and from the perspective of the health department or the health system, this is a passive approach. And it's generally considered less effective. So, uh, what does WHO recommend and why? Uh, from a systematic review of partner notification services, uh, the key evidence showed that assisted strategies increase HIV testing uptake and linkage to care among partners of people living with HIV, uh, that assisted partner notification services and all partner notification approaches result in high test positivity or yield, um, and that they're safe, these approaches are safe. Social harm and adver other adverse events were very rare in trials and in programs. And this led WHO to recommend that uh, voluntary assisted partner notification services be offered as part of a comprehensive package of testing and care offered to people with HIV. So WHO and PEPFAR have laid out some key principles of partner notification services. That these services be client-centered and client-focused. It's really focused on the needs of both the clients and their partners. That partner services be confidential, uh, voluntary and non-coercive, that referrals to prevention and care are, are integrated into the programs, that they be non-judgmental um, and culturally and linguistically appropriate, and that they be free and accessible and available to everyone. So some important imp considerations for implementation, you know, how these services are implemented can be vary by provider type, setting, and population. That voluntariness and confidentiality are really paramount. 
Notification should be made only to partners. Uh, and the anonymity of the index client should be maintained if they desire that. Uh, and that criminal justice, law enforcement, and non-health personnel should not be involved in these services. The services should be offered periodically. Um, that means throughout the, you know, after their first diagnosis, and then as a, throughout the course of HIV treatment and care. Um, that's because people's situations and partnerships change, as well as their readiness to consent to partner no notification, as or share their status with their partners. Uh, and another that you know, in her terms of this client-centered and client-focused approach, that partner preferred notification approaches, as well as contact methods, vary by context, individual, and uh, partnerships. So the WHO guidelines also outline some key potential challenges. First, that laws or policies that stigmatize, criminalize, or discriminate against key populations or people living with HIV can really complicate the delivery uh, and monitoring of partner notification, particularly with respect to an increased reluctance to participate in partner notification uh, among these populations. And also that eliciting, locating, and notifying partners can be challenging. It requires well-trained providers and can be a significant require significant investment in human resources and in terms of the effort required to do this work. Um, you know, these activities really can be affected by relationship dynamics within partnerships, which are obviously can be complicated. Uh, and that these activities may be especially challenging for non-primary and casual partners or for mobile, vulnerable, and key populations. Um, so uh, partner notification and index testing often get discussed sort of in the same breath. Um, they're both index-based approaches to increasing HIV case finding. Um, and so I just wanted to point out a couple different uh, de differences in the definitions, um, at least in the definitions, if not in how they actually become implemented. Uh, so in partner notification, uh, just two things. One, the, the primary focus is on sexual or drug injecting partners, whereas in index testing, you may um, expand to a broader uh, set of contacts, which might include children or other household members. And then in partner notification, there's really an, an emphasis and promotion of notifying the name contacts about their potential exposure as well as, and then offering HIV testing. Whereas index testing may only involve um, offering the HIV test alone. And the, you know, just to think that both of these can be implemented in either community or facility settings uh, and how we talk about them um, and the, definite, the terminology we use may actually affect um, uptake. Uh, and finally, just uh, to leave you kind of where, where we are globally, this is a so from an ongoing review of uh, the uptake of assisted partner notification and index testing uh, policies by a region of the world. Uh, and what you see is that a policy, you know, the in uptake of these policies have been increasing over the last couple of years, uh, but there's still many uh, countries left without policies. And in the Southeast Asian region, where Indone which includes Indonesia, uh, only six of the 11 countries uh, have an <coughs> index testing uh, or partner notification policy as of, I guess this is of last year, so maybe there are more <coughs> now. Um, so with that, I just want to acknowledge my WHO colleagues, and especially Cheryl Johnson at headquarters, and Tiara Nisai, uh, who's really instrumental in getting me here, and um, I'm looking forward to working with her on partner notification uh, uh, implementation here in Indonesia. Uh, and leave you, you with some uh, resources that may be of use. Uh, terima kasih. Terima kasih, Dr. David Katz. Saya undang ke semua pembicara untuk duduk di depan. Kita akan mulai dengan sesi tanya jawab. Waktunya singkat. Mudah-mudahan kita bisa mendapatkan diskusi yang uh, lebih mendalam terkait topik-topik.